he being represented currently by a lawyer? Yes, he is. Uh, 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 retired colonel. And uh, they're trying to get to the uh, Army Court of uh, Military Appeals right now. Um, they don't. Okay, have here's to what we got to do, Tony. Tony, hit, Tony, Tony, Tony. I know this is a terrible thing. We're going to hold you on the line. And we're going to get the details. Send me an email. It's going to take a while to get to me. I will try to get this to the right defense organization. We'll try to get it up on my site to raise money and get a good lawyer in there to defend them because this is this has got to stop. It's got to stop. Got to stop. Alan, WABC Line 9, fire away on the Savage Nation. Vladimir Putin, Alan, lo- Vladimir Putin stands to gain immensely if the mantra, if the mantra throughout here has been that this is a terrorist act, okay? The only person that gains is Vladimir Putin. So I want to submit to your consideration that he took down this plane, because look at it this way. A couple of weeks... Oh, hold on, please. Hold on. Uh, so you have information that no one else has that the Russians shot down their own passenger jet. No, but I want to point out to you that the and Russians... Say, do you also have, wait, do you, are you also one of those who believe the United States and Israel took down the World Trade Center? No, not at all, Dr. Savage. Oil prices have been... Well, I don't know, because it sounds like a... It's, I mean, you know, you could think anything you want, but I sincerely doubt whether Putin would shoot down his own plane over the Sinai. There's been no ballistics that this was a, a shoot down of any sort. And two weeks ago... No- all right, so... Well, wait, we, we've had no information other than it's a bomb. That's what we've heard, right? Yeah, but let me just point something else out. If he could dominate this region now, where this is his all-you-can-eat pass, okay, then he could stabilize oil prices, which has crippled this country. I think this is a no-brainer. I mean, he stood... Well, yeah, but you're assuming that he's that evil, aren't you? You're assuming that he's that evil that he would blow up a plane with women and children on it just for his own aggrandizement and power. Now... I would say to you that leaders of all countries have done worse than that to gain power, including our own country. So I'm not a child when it comes to that kind of behavior. But in my in my opinion, by what I have read, this does not have the fingerprints of uh, Putin on it. I'm sorry. I don't agree with you on that. And there's no point in even going. But see, we can have an argument over this. For, and we have no meaning. I don't know. You don't know. We haven't seen the evidence. So why would we jump to that conclusion? A terrorist bombing. The terrorists like to gloat. They're not gloating. They would have taken video of the bomb being loaded on the plane. This whoa, 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 whoa! My friend, my friend. They took credit for this. They celebrated the downing of the Russian airliner. The very next minute, they said they did it. These are not people that take credit. These are people that release videos of a hundred people being beheaded on a beach and it turns red. Why don't they show us the video of a bomb going on this plane? Simple. Because there's no proof. Wait, wait, wait. Stop for a minute. Hold on. You're not making any sense. What camera would survive such a bomb? No. Wait, have you invented that yet? Listen to me, okay? There is well, no... I am listening to you, but my friends, stop. You said they would produce a video showing the bomb going off on the plane. And how would that camera survive such a blast? Just loading a bomb onto the plane would be prior. They're saying it was an inside. All right, so now you're backing it up. You're saying, show us a video of one of your henchmen at the airport loading the bomb on the plane. Is that what you're saying? That's been their IQ, though. They've shown us everything else. They haven't left it to the CIA to decipher. These are primitive people that want you to see how bold they are. Vladimir Putin stands to gain by playing along with the fact that a bomb took down this plane. I don't think. I, I tell you what. I, I tell you what. I don't. I don't agree with you on the basis just of your statement. I can't accept that you're saying that telling me the truth here. How do you know this is true? Follow the money. And it leads to his ability to finally stabilize oil prices. That's all this is about. So, uh, oh, okay, so it's all about oil now. It's all about oil. Uh, war for oil again. We're back to Bush. All right, years. Alan, I disagree. I disagree with you, but I thank you for having the opportunity to speak this Veterans Day uh, on the Savage Nation. That opens up one line for conspiracy crazy calls. In fact, line eight will now be called crazy conspiracy line. It's now open on the Savage Nation, 855-400-7282. Back in a minute.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-BUI-C. It's the day for all of us to take our hats off and put our hand on our heart. For all of the veterans, both above ground and below ground, let me tell you, you know, it's not just lip service when people say freedom is not free. And it's not just lip service when you say, well, it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have the freedoms we have today. It's real. It has meaning. And the war that is being conducted right now against the thousand-year-old Islamo-fascists is our greatest challenge since Adolf Hitler. You may not know that. You may think that racism is our biggest challenge, or fat in the food, or sugar in the food, or... Global warming is our biggest problem, and that's because your optic chiasma has been destroyed by the educational system, or shall I say the propaganda system. The greatest threat facing you in the present and the future is Islamo-fascism, both out of the nation and in the nation. So salute the military when it goes by. KSFO, TJ, fire away. You're on the Savage Nation. Dr. Michael, several years ago, I had the distinct privilege of being a reader during the first annual Savage Read-In, where you invited listeners to call into the show and read one of their favorite passages from the book, The Savage Nation. And I can't think of a better way to honor Veterans Day than to ask you to please continue that savage tradition with Government Zero. More than ever, we... You know, that's a very... I, would, I wouldn't have dared do it because people would say it's too self-serving, but I'll tell you what, TJ, I will do it tomorrow. And I will do it Friday, God willing. If you have a great passage from Government Zero that people want to read, I'm going to invite them to read, what, 30 seconds or a minute's worth? Is that what we did? You did. You, you asked uh, callers to uh, call in and read one of their favorite passages, and then you asked for the page number, and then you gave a few moments for all the listeners to turn to that same page, and then I was able to read my section while everybody else read along. And I got to tell you, Doctor. Well, we don't. Uh, hold on, TJ. Hold on. If you were to do that now, what section would it be without doing it? What would the section be from Government Zero? Uh, unfortunately, I can't answer that because I haven't bought the book yet. Um, but plan to. All right. Okay, but that's fine. You're getting a copy. Thank you for the suggestion. It's a great suggestion. Do I have time for the caller, George, on WABC on Line Three, for one minute? No. no. George says this: If Islam is against homosexuality, how could the rape of boys be accepted in Afghanistan? George. That's one of the questions that seems to be pregnant and not answered yet. It seems Islam is so pure and so against gayness, and yet the rape of young boys is so acceptable that American military men are being thrown out of the military for stopping the rape of young boys in Afghanistan. That's something I guess only Barry can answer. Send it to Barry, courtesy of the Savage Nation. I'm sure you won't get an answer any day soon. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This is Michael Savage saluting our veterans. God bless the American military on The Savage Nation. I saw a story this weekend that attracted my eye. There was a thermonuclear missile launch near Los Angeles over the weekend. We do not know if that missile contained a nuclear weapon or not. We don't know where it went. But there's a big question. Viewers across California and parts of the West Coast reported seeing a very strange, very large flash of light across the Pacific Ocean Saturday night, and then they were told the U.S. Navy was conducting a missile test. Now, here's the question to the American audience and to the world. You mean in the entire Pacific Ocean? One of our submarines, the USS Kentucky, an Ohio-class SSBN, could not have launched the missile in the middle of the ocean. Why did they have to launch it off the coast of California and alter flight paths at LAX? Why did they do that? 
why wasn't the entire Pacific Ocean good enough for such a test launch? Why did the U.S. military, meaning Barry Obama and the sorority, choose to launch such a test right off the coast of California? But you look at the big picture. You look at the ISIS war against the world, and we're not hearing a word about it from uh, Caesar and the White House. And then you ask yourself, what the heck is going on that the U.S. Navy would conduct a, a test of this magnitude, firing a missile from a, a Trident submarine, USS Kentucky, an Ohio-class SSBN, off the coast of Southern California. Why would they launch from the West Coast, forcing airplanes to divert, freaking out, I don't know, millions of people on the West Coast who saw a strange large flash of light across the ocean Saturday night? Why did the U.S. Navy test so close to our shore? Well, I have the answer. As usual, Michael Savage is the answer man. You want to hear the answer? I'll give you the answer, because you see, China has, with American technology, stolen technology, technology given to them by Democrat donors, going all the way back to the Clinton era, been rapidly developing not only their Navy, but their ability to launch nuclear missiles at the United States of America from the homeland of China. Unfortunately for the Chinese, they have only a range of 1,500 miles, and so... The United States had to show China that although they are certainly capable of annihilating a city or a nation, they cannot reach the United States of America from China with a missile launch. But we can reach them with a missile launch. And if you think Obama is making the world a safer place, I disagree with you totally. I disagree with you totally. This lunatic in the White House has damaged relations with Russia, creating a new Cold War with Russia. Now the girls who are running his show are now threatening and saber-rattling against China, saying, you know what, you can only launch 1,500 miles from China. We can launch, I think it's what, 4,000-mile range? I have no idea what the range is from the United States. But you see, with our submarines, the fact of the matter is we can launch from anywhere. They have many submarines, but I do not know if they have ballistic submarines. The point is, this is insanity. This is insanity. China is building a modern and regionally powerful navy with limited but tremendously growing cap capability for conducting operations beyond China's region near their own shores. And they have a broad array of platform and weapon acquisition programs, which they've gotten by stealing from the United States, buying from Iran and North Korea, including anti-ship ballistic missiles, anti-ship cruise missiles, submarines, surface ships, aircraft. I know this is frightening, and many of you don't want to hear this. You'd rather think about what some a group of ball players have to say in Missouri, or what the moron Bernie Sanders, the street peddler, the pickle salesman from Ludlow Street, has to say about politics. But to me, the national security is the number one issue. And this player in the White House is not playing the game very well. He's put us at a tremendous disadvantage. And just before this missile test on Saturday night off the coast of L.A., this strange story came out. The weakling defense secretary, the one who speaks by shaking with a pink tie, threatened China and Russia. That's right, you heard me. The weakling pink tie defense secretary, Ashlyn Carter, who has been rushing as quickly as he can to denigrate our military, said that Russia and China are potentially threatening the global order. What in the world is this administration doing? I know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. That's what they're doing. Now let's go back to the hatred in the United States of America. As I said before, University of Missouri president is forced to resign, allegedly over some complaints that football players had. Co-host Stephen A. Smith reacted to the news of the University of Missouri president, Tim Wolf, being forced to resign amid racial tension and protests on campus. Mr. Smith first said that Wolf had to go due to the black football players skipping out on football activities until he steps down. I disagree, by the way. I would have dismissed the football players and suspended football. And remember what the mission of a university is. It's not football. It's learning. But nevertheless, he later added, that, quote, everyone who is white is not racist. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. 
warning black America, he did, that just because someone with different pigmentation disagrees with them does not make them racist. He continued, and remember he is African American. To white Americans out there accept the reality that at some level racism exists. It's inescapable. It's a reality, Smith said. 